Hey guys! Another one day project that turned into a two afternoon paint job, but it was totally worth the time spent. As you can see, this is a classic Primaris Assault model, with a few minor changes. The model was already glued, so I had to cut his left arm off. I took a power fist from the Imperial Fist Primaris upgrade sprue. Getting rid of the Imperial Fist logo was a case of gently cutting it off and sanding a little bit afterwards. He also got a salamander shoulder pad. After this was done, I found a hammer in the Warhammer Fantasy Flagellant sprue, sanded it a little to make it flatter and put on this piece of armor between his chest and right shoulder. Additionally, I used my X-Acto blade to give him some scratches and my electric drill for some bullet holes. Then it was just filling all of the gaps with milliput and the model was ready for priming. One for all black acrylic primer is something I am really getting to like more and more every time I use it. It is not a cheap alternative, but it has its advantages. It doesn't need any dilution, it is sturdy and covers well. Every model gets a coat of the black paint I will use later, and I mean Balavallejo black here. This allows me to repaint the model black if I made any mistakes without any visible differences. One for all it's great, but it is quite glossy, and as you know, if you take, theoretically, two of the same paints from different producers, or even buy the same paint from the same company, but some time later it will probably be different. I wanted to play a little bit here with the acrylic X I have, therefore he got two separate, let's call it xenotool layers, of a grey ink and a white one for the brighter highlights. I don't consider this as a typical xenotool, because a normal xenotool prime would be just spraying the ink from above, or any position I would think the light was shining on him. Here I was a bit selective and used the inks on the parts of the body I wanted to be brighter. The next steps were as follows. I used those three inks and a brighter yellow one afterwards. The first one, as seen on the left side, was vivid lime green ink, used for most of the model, including the highlights and the shadows. I was spraying it with a low PSI, putting a little bit of the ink in the shadows and giving a thick layer in the highlights. This allowed me to recognize later where were the darker points. The shadows were then sprayed with a mix of the vivid green and the darker one. It has a very specific name and I will not say it out loud. Just a quick FYI guys, all of the footage is 400% speed. If you want to see it in the real speed, just turn it down to 0.25 in the video settings. The full footage without cuts will be visible on my Patreon. Link to it will be in the video description. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share, like and comment, I am always happy to answer any mails or comments. Getting back to the paint job now. As you can see here on the left, I used a lighter yellow ink to make the highlights even a bit brighter than they were after spraying with the vivid green. Why am I doing that? The person asking for this test model wanted me to reference this picture among many, therefore the brighter yellow. We made, of course, a few compromises and I was allowed to sneak in a few more shadows after some convincing. They always help to make the model more readable. I was very adamant here. And sorry, of course, if the focus on the cam is not correct at some points, I will try to edit the video to only show you the best quality, but my phone tends to lose focus if I move the model even a bit and if I am in a painting flow it occurs very often. And this is more or less what we got in the airbrushing phase. 
The model looks very glossy, but don't worry about that. Those are the inks. They have that shine to them. It can always be undone with a matte varnish. On the varnish topic, I sprayed the model with gloss varnish and let it dry overnight. Then I took some black oil paint, mixed with an odorless thinner and started going for the black lining effect. As it turned out really quick, the mixture was too watery, so I was adding more and more paint to the thinner and testing it until the effect was satisfying enough. The capillarity effect mixed with a smooth surface sprayed with the gloss varnish allows for the wash mixture to flow into all nooks and crannies. After a few minutes, when most of the thinner evaporated, it is safe to use a soft sponge or a Q-tip to remove the wash from all of the places it wasn't supposed to be in. Even the next day it is still possible and the oil paint can be easily reactivated with the thinner. Just remember to give it a gloss varnish to not damage the surface. Let's skip the two next steps as they are boring and would leave you with a lot of footage that is really self-explanatory. I painted all of the elements that would have a different color than the armor colors with black Vallejo and edge highlighted the whole armor with a yellow AK paint. Have patience to yellow paint. Whatever brand you use, it covers really really bad, you can believe me. The next steps were painting the metallic elements with AK natural steel and Balthazar gold. The model doesn't have many gold parts, so it was mostly the first paint. I left the shadows black on purpose as I knew that Nuln oil would darken them down anyway. After the metallics were dry, I gave them a solid coat of Nuln oil, finishing my brush strokes on purpose in the shadows. Nuln oil like any shade product can be used in many different ways and this way the majority of it was in the places that I wanted to be black or darker. After the wash was dry I took AK metallic silver and used it directly on the steel parts and mixed it very liberally with Balthazar gold. This paint separately and mixed with the gold one gave me a nice base for doing the edge highlights on the metallic parts. Just remember to use separate water between normal and metallic paints. The water that you used to clean your brush from the metallic paint will have metallic flakes that will get into your brush and mixed with non-metallic paint might end up in a metallic brown or red for example. A fun thing to test, but not for now. Remember, once again, to have different water pots for metallic and non-metallic paints. That's it. Ok guys, I talked a lot already. The biggest parts of the model are done and we need to move into the details. Let me leave you with some music and the painting process without me commenting it. There will be a fun also moment for the plasma gun and some extra effects for the power fist so don't skip that. The finished model will be at this time point of the video. If you want to skip to the end result, just move there. See you in a few minutes.
This is the finished project. Another, let's say, one day paint job that came into fruition. I had lots of fun with this model and could test a bit more the usage of acrylic inks used from the airbrush. What I learned here is that more is less. The model doesn't have fancy NMM, he doesn't have soft blends or a scenic base. It was just airbrushing, layering, airbrushing, layering. A speed project as someone might call it. What do you guys think? Leave a comment, I would really appreciate it. And as always, thank you for joining me today. You are all spectacular and I really mean it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give a like, give a share, leave a comment. Have a look at my Patreon and Instagram. Links to both of them will be visible in the video description. And of course, take care guys and see you in the next one. And don't forget, the Emperor protects.